Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this particularly dark, sultry, but with a hint of surprise look, was a viewer requested look with the Bloodlust palette. I got asked to produce a look that didn't involve the purples and that wasn't a neutral look. So you know me. Any chance to play with makeup? So, if you want to see exactly how I achieved this, how well or otherwise shadows performed, and discover why at one point I was looking a little bit like Alice Cooper from the School's Out video, you're just going to have to keep watching to find out. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get set for a roller coaster ride. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, sorry if the lighting's a little weird, but it is not even seven o'clock in the morning yet. Right, um, I don't know yet whether I'm doing the intro in black and white or not, but I got asked to do my second look with this using non-purples. Oh yeah, by the way, I have a full set of talons again, look. I'm fixed. I can poke myself in the eye with it again, which I did this morning in the shower. Marvellous. Um, also, it would appear that hay fever season has started already where I am because this eye keeps weeping and keeps feeling sticky. Lovely. So, if we get a watery eye situation over here, you're going to have to bear with me. But I got asked to do a non-purple look with this. So, okay then. Um, as always, this is a teaching channel and by that virtue I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. It also means that with my chronic pain I don't kill myself. There's a speed widget up there. If I am going to slow for you, please feel free to use it. Right, uh, I'm going to insert now, or when I finish talking, I'm going to insert the clip where I talk through uh, the different eye shapes, the difference between a deep set and hooded lids because they are often mistaken for one another and the number of people I see say, oh I've got hooded lids and I think, no, you've got deep set eyes. Then they moan that the hooded lid the, the, the hooded lid workaround isn't working for them and I'm like no that's because you've got deep set eyes so bit of a warning I will be very up close and personal when I do the eye talk through and once I've done the eye talk through I'll still be up close but I'll be applying some colours from this right here's the clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it 
tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, I'm back. Okay, I'm going to start off using one of my Do Colour brushes that I got from AliExpress, which is confusing the heck out of my white balance. Basically, it's that shaped and quite tightly packed because I want to have a little bit more control over how far up I blend. So, I am going to go into Vile Serpent, which is that beautiful teal in the palette. Um, I've heard a lot of people say they found it very patchy. So let's find out how patchy it is, because greens and purples are both difficult colours to create. So let's see just how well this vile serpent performs. Not too much kick up. It's quite hard pressed this one. But it's got pigment on the brush. As always, I'm holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. And I think I'll start about here. 
just little light circular movements. To slowly build the colour up. Now I've not put too much pigment on the brush because I do want to be able to build this up colour wise rather than suddenly have a huge warmth of it that won't blend out. Also I find that if you're using a teal or a green that's always a good plan anyway because if you are going to have problems blending them out you have a better chance of being able to fix it and, and get a good blend if you've not got too much on the brush to start with. Now as you've noticed I do this direction going towards the nose and reverse the direction coming back. That's because I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds, or just over 200 pounds. And um, the skin on my eyelid moves. But I know, you know, 20 year olds who've always been slim that have looser eyelids. By doing the circular movement you're gently moving the skin around to try and prevent the barcoding effect that you can get. Now I do struggle with my other eye because I have super super deep creasing just here where my eye was pulled around as a kid at the ophthalmic hospital. So I do have to do a slightly different procedure that aside. This is proving to be quite a difficult shade to blend. It's not blending as easily as other greens that he's done in the past, the greens that he's done in the Alien palette for example um, blended much 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 easier than this I'm really having to to work at this to get it to look how I want but it is eventually doing it Bring that down at the edge a little bit there, I think. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day? Are you watching me over your breakfast? Are you doing your makeup while you're watching me? Because I tell you, if, I, if I'm doing my makeup and I'm not filming it, I have other films running on my phone. YouTube. So maybe you're applying your makeup thinking, oh, I could never do that for work. But I had a request for the a non-purple look because of course everyone was doing either purples or either purple or pink or neutral. The majority of people were doing. I've seen quite a few people say, oh, can you get a neutral look out of this Jeffrey palette? And yeah, of course you can. You know, if you use Deviant, Royal Pain, and Monarchy, you get a very easy neutral look. If you want to see me do a neutral look with this palette, then let me know and I will do. I said that about... Um, the controversy palette and most people were like nah, we're not interested in seeing neutral so I didn't bother to film a neutral look with it but if you want to see a neutral look with this palette then let me know I'm just sitting back and checking I've got the same shape both sides because obviously I don't Photoshop 
my results you can start to see there a little bit what I'm talking about about the barcoding and I do have to lightly stretch my lid out this side because the the circular movement just doesn't doesn't cope because the um, the creasing's just too deep this side unfortunately. Okay, I'm gonna bring this outer edge down a little bit. Uh, I use a micropore cloth or a flannel or washcloth to clean my brushes with. I used to use a colour switch, so rough on your brushes, especially if you've got natural hair brushes. Avoid colour switches like the plague. Honestly, they're the worst thing you can use. They're okay in a pinch, but you'd honestly be better off getting kitchen roll, toilet roll, face tissue and wiping your brush off with than using one of those. Right, it is clean, it's just stained. Um, I'm going to go into Bleeding Heart, which is the Red Shimmer. Pick some of that up. Again, this is quite hard packed. Now, a lot of people are scared of using shimmers in a crease area, but at the end of the day, if you use a more densely packed brush like this rather than a big packing brush, um, and you blend as you would do a matte shadow. Eventually what happens is the majority of the shimmer pigments either blend in or blend away and you're left with the base colour pigment, which can be very striking. I'm just going to pop this just in here, just for a, a hit of something a little different. Now you see I'm one of these people who when I sit down to film unless I've got specific colours like on a palette bingo or um, one of my pick series films uh, normally you'll find that I don't have a scooby what colours I'm going to use or what sort of design I'm going to go for. I genuinely had no idea I was going to do this with the red this morning. But, I quite like it. It's almost Christmassy in a way. But you do have to kind of pack it on and then blend it rather than just blending straight away to get the right amount of pigment. I really like that flash of red like that. It's almost like when you see a oh, breaking nose. He's got the coronavirus now. Oh, interest rates in the UK being cut to shore up the economy. The coronavirus. That's good. Means my mortgage payment should go down. That'll be very nice for a few months. I'm tilting my head back to do this eye. Because obviously I'm blind in that one, so if I close this eye I can't see where I'm placing the shadow. A little bit of a Bit of a challenge that one. But this is like you know when you see like a, a a beautiful tropical bird suddenly lifts their wing and underneath they've got a bright flash, usually actually of either red or pink. It's kind of I think 
in the back of my mind the look I was going for today. Because with my deep set eyes, when my eyes are open, you don't really notice it that much till I blink or look down. I quite like that. And that red blended out very nicely indeed. But, as with all Jeffrey Reds, stains like a mofo. Because, unlike a certain Jacqueline Schill and Morphe, if he says his products are vegan, they stay vegan. He doesn't suddenly change the formula and include carmine and not tell people. I've seen quite a few people complain actually that it's not just a it's not just a a choice thing with a lot of people that they they prefer um, vegan shadows. Some people are actually allergic to carmine. So yes, not good at all. I'm going to go in to I think I'm going to go into Dungeon I know technically it's a purple but it's the grey purple I'm going to pop that just on this outer edge here And just lightly pull it through because I don't want to cover up much of the red. Still want to leave that pop of red there. Yeah, like that. It's much easier to show you what I'm doing with this eye. Because obviously I can close it. That's why it's frustrating when this eye gets affected by hay fever because it is the eye that I prefer to show you the design on because I can show you it easier. And again that's the tiger striping I was talking about. Don't pull your eye out like this unless you have the same issues as me. Otherwise you will have the same issues as me and I promise you they only ever get deeper. I'm going to go into, I think, the Executioner shade for my lid. I think I want to blend this top bit out a little bit more first. So let me grab a nice fluffy blending brush like this. I'm just going to dip into Monarchy, which is the sort of beige. I'm just going to use that. on this top edge just to soften the blend just a little bit where that green's a bit a bit sharp I know it means I've taken the colour right up to my brow but I do that when I do uh, editorial looks And sometimes just having one of the colours that will blend easier just along the edge there will really help just tidy that up and make it look that's better. That's much better. Right. So I have got 
my Geoffrey Star lip brush. I'm going to go into Executioner once I've packed the pigment on the brush. I'm going to wet it with some of my Slay All Day in Jasmine. Now, normally I would use a cheaper spray to wet the pigment with, but for some reason jasmine dries my jawline out so I just save it for this. Now Executioner is the the black with shimmer in so I'm going to be interested to see how much of that purple shimmer actually transfers to the lid and stays there the reason I like this lip brush is because you can get right into the corner of your eye. I'm just going to pack this on. fair amount of fallout with it but I'm not surprised at that at all. Okay. It's not bad. Just dry the brush off to go back in again and reload up with pigment to do the other eye. Now the other eye, again, I have to stretch it out because otherwise what happens is that the, the loose pigments, instead of being nicely blended across the lid, stack up in the deep crease. And then as I move my eye through the day, it all cascades down my face and into my eye and causes a lot of irritation especially if you've got, as this one has, glitter particles in it Dry that off, oh thank god it's got some glitter in my eye, great That will help with the hay fever You can see when you actually pack this shade on, it actually keeps that shimmer there quite nicely. Right. Before my eye starts streaming like mad, which it's already starting to do, thanks to me getting glitter in my eye, well done Angel. I'm going to pause you, sort my eye out and uh, put some foundation on and I will be back to finish off this eye look for you my darlings it will be instant gosh look at the state of this hello I'm back I think I sorted the eye watering situation out I think uh, I think I'll do my brows pretty colour again. I have soaped them using the uh, Revolution Soap Brow thingy again. So this is the angled brow brush. And I think I'll go into Vile Serpent. And Start about there in the brow. This is a good tip for you. If you want coloured brows, but you can't find a pomade, the shade that you want, you can. 
can just use eyeshadow powder but you will need something to hold it in during the day so I tend to do mine with the, the soap brow so it sort of sticks to the sticky soap before the sticky soap is set that was a lot of S's um, but you could also use like a clear mascara or a brow setting gel or just hairspray on a clean spoolie which not being funny that's what I used to use in the in the 80s so but it is a great way of making sure that your brows absolutely match the look that you have created as you can see from that I hope um, basically as soon as I got all of the glitter out of my eye my eye stopped watering so it was literally just because I'd got glitter in my eye that it was an issue it wasn't the shadow causing the problem it was my ineptitude of getting it in my eye which was the problem Uh, I'm going to go into Vile Serpent with this flat top brush again. Should I go into that or should I go into Dungeon? I might go into Dungeon actually. Having done Vile Serpent on the brows. Let's just slide that. I've always had very, very watery eyes. I've never been able to keep anything in my waterline for long. Um, if you see any photos of me with stuff in my waterline, you can bet your bottom dollar that as soon as the photos were done, my eye was streaming so badly I had to take it back off again. Um, so if you struggle the same way, then just smoke out your lower lash line like I'm doing. You still get the same emphasis of colour, but without the irritation on your lens which reminded me to take some tablets but I've already taken them because I've been up for so damn long right uh, I'm going to go into I think Royal Pain just to smudge the lower lash line out because I want to pick up on the red but I don't want to detract from the red and obviously you also have to be careful if you're using a pink underneath your eye because get it wrong it looks like you got pink eye that's where it's always useful to have a deeper colour first like I did there with uh, Dungeon this is the um, brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette I love it because it's flat top but it's chonky it's really great for getting under your lashes and smudging out without bringing it too far down your face. Hmm. <laughs> right, this is a cheap lip brush that I got from eBay probably a decade ago. I'm going to go into Your Majesty initially, which is the creamy white matte. I'm just going to run that under the tail of the brow, because obviously where I took um, Monarchy up to there, I just want to add a little bit of brightness back in before I pop any colourful shade on top. I think I'm going to go in with Take, no I'm going to go in with Wet Jewel, that's one of his new formulas. Which does not like picking up on this sort of brush. Okay, I'm just going to take the crown instead. There we go. 
I did manage to get wet jewel on my um, lid for the first look that I did so obviously it does greatly matter which brush you use um, sorry let's use take the crown on the inner corner as well and I'll just bring that down and blend it in with the colours that I've got underneath my eye You don't have to do that, you can just do the inner corner. But with my eye shape, I like to bring it down like that. I just think it helps finish the eye shape off nicely. Right. I'm going to pause you for one last time while I chuck some highlight on, some mascara, some lipstick, do something with my hair. And I'll be back with my final not purple except for the accents look don't go anywhere it'll be innocent for you again I am back I thought with such a dark gothic -y look I'd go for a lighter lipstick uh, the lipstick in question is another one of the Charlotte Tilbury ones that my lovely friend Hedda sent me uh, this is Bosworth's Beauty so Kate Bosworth um, Absolutely love these lipsticks. The highlight is this this side, the this side of the Pixie uh, Subtle Sunrise Duo. Mascara is my usual Revolution Cannabis Sativa. Bless you, neighbour. Uh, <laughs> Again, I love that mascara, but if you've got small eyes, it's got a massive brush. So, there we go. There is my non-purple, except for the little alrighty bits, look with the Bloodlust palette as requested. As I said, if you want to see me do a neutral look with this, or well, there are any other specific shades you want to see me use, then let me know and I'll be happy to produce a look for you. I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if it's not your eye style, well, can't please everybody all the time. Uh, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting people left and right, it's very frustrating. Uh, and don't forget to, even if you can't comment, please try and remember to hit the like button because apparently just having that interaction can make a difference as to how often or how many platforms your um, film gets recommended on. So that would be really helpful for me, thank you. If you are new here, hi. Hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got this far through the film, I guess there must be something about it you enjoyed. Even if it was just seeing my eye run like Usain Bolt in the 100 metre final. It would be awesome if you too would like to join the madness and the friendliness that is the 4F family. We are the nicest group of people on YouTube. It's very easy to do that. You hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, and then you ring the bell, and then you say you want all notifications, and then you confirm you want all notifications, and then hopefully YouTube will send you a notification for every four films that I put up. Speaking of which, I have an awful lot of films that you can go and watch. Basically, pick a playlist, grab a drink and a snack, put your feet up, and in indulge. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.